kindly turn with us to Psalms 89 and I shall read verse 46. Psalm 89 verse 46. How long, O Lord, will thou hide thyself forever? Shall thy wrath burn like fire? Dear Father God, I commit this text in your hands, Lord. The whole passage into your hands. Give me the needed grace, anointing and the unction that I'd be able to minister a word to your people. In Jesus' name, I pray. Keep that passage open. Psalm 89 has got 52 verses. We are going to have a reading of all the 52 verses. The reading of the 52 verses with meaning and understanding may take about six or seven minutes. But I'm not going to read all those 60, 52 verses together. The very message for this morning is just an exposition of Psalm 52. I'm sorry, Psalm 89, all the 52 verses. It was very new to me. I felt that I had never read this psalm earlier. And also I felt that I never heard anybody preaching a message from this song. Though I heard a very powerful message from this song, with all humility I love to tell you, I could not say that message was complete and comprehensive. As I said earlier, I don't think that I'd be able to handle this sublime psalm with its due emphasis. I feel too small to handle this psalm. But I do believe the Lord will help you, help me, help you all, help us all. Psalm 89. Charles Spurgeon says, The most precious psalm of instruction. The most precious psalm of instruction. And if you go to the introduction, it says, Moskil of Ethan the Ezraite. Moskil of Ethan the Ezraite. What do we mean by Moskil? Moskil means instruction. Teaching. So it's a teaching of Ethan the Ezraite. Ethan means enduring, firm, strong. So it is the teaching of a strong one, teaching of a firm one, teaching of someone who is enduring. So who is this Ethan? If you read 1 Chronicles 6.44 1 Chronicle 15.17 1 Chronicle 15.19 We may understand that this Ethan, the Ezraite, was a Levite. Probably of the family of Merari, the three brothers. So probably he was from the family of Merari and appointed by David as one of the leaders of the temple music with Haman and Asa. Psalm 88 was written by Haman the Ezraite. Haman the Ezraite. And Psalm 77 was written by Asa. And about Asa, I have told you many times, one of the songs that I have preached the most, Psalm 77. So they all were in the day, days of David. We strongly, I strongly believe, though there are differences of opinion, I strongly believe this Ethan, the Ezraite, 
was in the days of David and he was appointed as a, a leader, a one of the leaders of the worship team. So we see Ezra Haid, uh, the Ethan, the Amon and Asa. And they are very wise people. There is a very special mention about this Ethan also. In 1 King 4.31 1 King 4.31 That is about Solomon. When Solomon's wisdom was recorded, that is a powerful statement. He was wiser than all men. Solomon was wiser than all men than Ethan. Solomon was wiser than Ethan. So to compare or to speak about the wisdom of Solomon, the sacred book takes Ethan as the yardstick. He was wiser than Ethan. So Ethan was a very wise man. This uh, Psalm 89 was written by a very wise man. Maybe there's another reason why I find it very difficult to handle this psalm. It's not just, just a psalmist by anointing. By virtue, he's a wise man. So this is a psalm of a wise man. And probably this psalm was written in the days of Rehobayam. This is my conjury. Some people put the background of this psalm to a latter days. But I strongly believe this could be written in the days of Rehobayam, the son of Solomon and uh, Nama. Nama was the wife of Solomon, one of the wives of Solomon and the mother of Rehobayam. And Nama was not a Jewish woman, not a Hebrew woman. She was an Amorites. She was from Amorites. I'm giving the historical background so that you could be able to understand this psalm better. So Ethan was a wise man. Probably he was in the days of David. David appointed him as, a, as one of the leaders of the worship team. And this Ethan wise man was from the tribe of Levi. Maybe from the family of Merari. All these things I was studying, getting information from different books and I was coming to an understanding. That helps me understand this psalm better. And I want to tell you about this Rehobayam. Rehobayam was the son of Solomon and also you should understand he is the son of Nama the Amoratites. Solomon married many wives. One of the wives was Nama the Amoratites. So his, the Rehobayam background her father was a Hebrew, an Israelite, a Jew, and the mother was an Amoritess. The mother was an Amoritess. So Rehobayam, uh, uh, 50, uh, 50 Hebrew, 50 pagan. It could be written in the days of Rehobayam or even in the days of the uh, uh, king Ab uh, Abiyam. Abiyam. Anybody knows who is Abiyam or Abijam? Sunday school. So we know David, we know Solomon, we know Rehobayam. Abiyam is the son of Rehobayam. Or the grandson of Solomon, Abiyam. So it must be written in the days of Rehobayam or Abiyam. However, when Ethan was writing this song, when Ethan was writing this song, Ethan must be very old. He was already a wise man. His wisdom was, uh, Solomon's wisdom was compared against Ethan's wisdom. And when Ethan was writing this song, he was an old man with wisdom and with rich experience. With wisdom and with rich experience. How do I know Ethan was old man? If it was written in the days of Rehobayam or his son Abiyam and he was appointed as a worship leader in the days of David. Now pretty, he must be very old. He must be in his late 80s. Even if he is appointed in the worship team when he was 18 or 20. 
the days of devi the days of solomon the days of rehobaya and ethan must be pretty old by name with rich experience now what is the background of this song what is the background of this song and if you read uh, 2 samuel chapter 7 the whole chapter from verse 1 to 29 so now david has become the king all the wars against him are over david has established his kingdom david who was running as a forlorn in the wilderness in the forest hiding in the caves now built a beautiful palace a man lying on the open now he is living in a palace he has got a burden i am living in a palace the ark of covenant is only in a tent why should not i build a big house a house for the ark i was lying in the wilderness now god has given me a kingdom god has given me a house now the ark of covenant it is as it was in the wilderness it is as it was in the wilderness so he was talking this to nathan the prophet david was confiding his uh, desire with nathan the servant of god nathan went back home in the night vision god talked to nathan god told nathan see i have chosen david with a definite purpose and i will establish his kingdom his throne will never be moved away his children will reign forever and ever it is not david his son will build a house for me but however i will not dwell in a house that's built by him i will not dwell in a house that's built by him if the children of david if they go here if they backslide i may punish them with a rod i may punish them with a whip but i will not forsake them i will establish his kingdom forever and ever so next morning nathan came and told david david was very happy he believed every word of nathan and he said lord i thank you lord i praise you lord let the house of your servant be blessed with all your blessings let the house of your servant be blessed with all your blessings probably this was known to others certainly it was known to the worship team of david david is a good singer david loves the worship team probably david was sharing his heart with the worship team this prophet nathan would have shared this with the worship team nathan was a wise man nathan heard about this prophecy everything was okay in the days of david david died in the hands of solomon the kingdom was well established the kingdom was well established nathan was also growing in age Nathan could remember how the prophecy is being fulfilled as the days are passing by Solomon was marrying many wives and he was yielding to pagan worship a temple for the pagan god is built in it was a very it must have been it must have been a great pain for Nathan it must have been a great pain for retha solomon died as many bible scholars believe solomon repented and he got saved or he committed himself then only he wrote the ecclesiastes and songs of solomon there must have been a great conversion the days of solomon to us the end rehobeam coming to the power Now Ethan has got another question. This Rehoboam has got a seed of the Amorites. The Amorites women made the hearts of Solomon to change, to backslide. A lady of that kind has become the mother of Rehoboam. If she could influence her husband how much more she could influence her son what will happen to david's kingdom what will happen to god's promise 
that might have been a million dollar question in the heart of rehobiah i'm sorry in the heart of ethan days passed by there was a wrong decision of rehobiah ethan must have been one of the wise men of the days of solomon of the days of david but rehobiah was not taking counsel from ethan or amon or asa or any of the wise men of his father's days a grandfather's days he took counsel of his friends and took a wrong decision and the kingdom was split and there was a war between there was a perpetual war between 10 parts of israel and two parts of israel the kingdom was divided into 10 is to 2 10 on one side and 2 on the other side the kingdom that was under david the kingdom that was under solomon even for one generation that could not endure even for one generation that could not endure the heart of ethan was broke this could be the background of that powerful song lord you gave all these promises you made this covenant with david i heard many people preach on the covenant god made with david from psalm 89 but the psalm 89 is not to speak about the covenant of god the god davidic covenant the covenant god made with david that is not the substance of psalm 8 and that you could read in 2 psalm chapter 7 2 samuel chapter 7 but psalm 89 is the perplexity of the prophet the perplexity of the prophet you made all these covenants but what happened when i think about the whole psalm in its total totality the different parts of the song you can just make a note of it you can just make a note of it what is in this song god's promise to david god's promise to david through nathan nathan had the revelation in a vision was nathan true was the revelation nathan understood properly Were Nathan able to communicate that totally to David? What was David understanding of that vision? So here we have got God's promise to David, God's covenant with David, God's promise to David. Then we see the prophets, uh, God's power, God's strength, God's justice. God's faithfulness to fulfill that promise God's promise and God's power God's power Then we see prophet's perplexity I believe in God's power I believe in God's promise but things are happening contrary to what God said the kingdom is divided it has become a mockery to everybody so prophet's perplexity god's promise god's power prophet's perplexity perturbed perplexed he could not understand what's happening number 4 we see prophet's prayer because he was perplexed his prayer his lamentation his cry and also we read in this song prophets praises this morning when i was driving to the church these five state a uh, five uh, points the lord just put in my mind as i was driving to the church so what do we see in this song 
God's promise and God's power prophet's perplexity prophet's prayer and prophet's praise now we are getting into the sacred division of this song this is how i understand the song i help you to understand the song just i am getting into the song as it is to its sacred division number 1 i love that you could make a note of it confidence of the psalmist confidence of the psalmist he doesn't start with a negative note lord what happened what happened to your promise things are happening contrary to what you said so he is not starting with a negative tone he is starting with confidence though though things went contrary to a popular belief still he was confident and the sacred poet comments by um uh, affirming his belief in the faithfulness of the lord to his covenant the psalmist confirms his belief in the faithfulness of god we read the first four verses the first four verses confidence of the psalmist i will sing of the mercies of the lord forever things have gone contrary but ethan just i imagine old man some in his past uh, past 80s he says i will sing of the mercies of the lord forever let come what may i will sing of the mercies of the lord forever with my mouth will i make known thy faithfulness to all generation lord let come what may be let rehabam come let abiam comes whatever it may be lord i will declare your faithfulness to all generation for i have said he has said earlier maybe he would have told the congregation when he was leading the worship mercy shall be built up for ever the lord has got mercy in store for you the lord has built up mercy for his kingdom for his chosen ones mercy shall be built up for ever thy faithfulness shall thou establish in the very heavens i have told the people when i was leading the worship when i was prophesying when i was preaching i have told the people the lord has built up mercy for ever his faithfulness will not change i have declared that i will continue to glorify the lord and he says god's word i have made a covenant with my chosen lord you have said i have told the people thus god says thus god of israel says i have made a covenant with my chosen i have sworn unto david my servant ethan has told others ethan has told the congregation ethan has told the people that god has made a covenant with his chosen and god has shown unto david made a promise unto david his servant god told david thy seed will i establish forever god has told david whether solomon makes a mistake rehoboam makes a mistake abia makes a mistake god has told david i will establish forever i will establish thy seed forever and build up your throne to all generations i have said that in the song there are uh, the words sela is found in different places for me yesterday when i was meditating when i was meditating is not just from any book or anybody's notes i am sharing with you what the lord burdened me i am sharing with you this sela was helping me very much sela means pause stop i have said all these things there was a nagging inside things are happening contrary to what i have promised or what i have to- told the people things are happening contrary to what the lord has promised what the lord has told me i have told the people god has given a promise to david and god will establish his kingdom forever i have told the people there is a nagging inside But things are happening contrary to what the lord has promised there is a pause and the uh, second point 
he considers the attribute of god verses 5 to 14 in those 10 verses when he believed and praised god there was a gap maybe for a few seconds stunned but things are contrary to what the lord has said immediately he started meditating on the attributes on the uh, started considering the characteristics of god i tell you in the name of jesus you believe in god's promise but at time you are able to you are unable to understand god's promise you get perplexed and you you told your children god will not leave us god will not forsake us you told your ch- friends i have i have taken jesus my personal savior god is with me god will not leave me god will not forsake me but now things are contrary you you, you think about it. i have spoken i have told my children i have told my friends i have told in the sunday school i have told in the youth meeting my god is an awesome god i told that in the congregation things are happening contrary to what i have said i know this is a prophecy to somebody immediately to protect himself probably and also to help us today he started con- uh, considering contemplating the attributes of god i just read the attributes of god quickly verse 5 to 14 the mood changes and the heaven shall praise thy wonders o lord thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints lord in the congregation of saints you are faith whether solomon would marry thousand wives or rehoboam will not listen to the counsel of the uh, aged people and the wise people and he listen to the counsel of the uh, wicked friends you are faithfulness lord it is in the congregation of the saints for who in the heaven can be compared unto you lord who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the lord god is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be held in reverence of all them that are about him those who are around him whatever may happen even things are taking place contrary to what the lord has promised I'm unable to believe I, I I mean a situation has come where I cannot believe in God. I believed in God. But now I find it difficult to believe in God. Everything has changed. But he says those who are round about him they will always have that God in reverence whether he is apparently trustworthy or not. I say why should you believe this God? He is not trustworthy. he is not doing what he has promised today the evangelists and also the pastors taught people a very weak christianity i have told you many times believing is not receiving what we believe believing is what god can do faith is believing in what god can do faith is not receiving what we believe but those who are round about him they will always have him in reverence was eight o lord god of hosts who is uh, who is a strong lord like unto thee or to thy faithfulness round about thee those who are round about thee those who are with thee your faithfulness is very strong lord and verse 9 thou rulest the raging of the sea when the waves thereof arise thou stillest them thou hast broken rehab in pieces that's egypt Thou hast broken Egypt in pieces as one that is slain thou hast scattered thine enemies with a strong arm the heavens are thine the earth also is thine as for the world and the fullness thereof thou hast founded them the north and the south thou hast created them Tabor and Hermon shall rejoice in thy name they are the mountains mountain Tabor and mountain Hermon the tabur and mountain hermon shall rejoice in thy name thou hast a mighty arm strong is thy hand and high is thy right hand not only are faithful not only are strong justice and judgment are thy habitation of thy throne you are not going to do anything unjustice there will be no injustice in your hand 
you are not going to have any wrong judgment justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne not only faithfulness not only justice not only judgment not only power might he says mercy and truth shall go before thy face who is this god strong god faithful god powerful god mighty god god of justice god of judgment god of mercy god of truth he is always faithful to his saints he is always faithful to them who are around about him he will not give a wrong judgment justice is with him he will show mercy to his people he will show mercy to his people so first he says he praises god he has got confidence in the lord he has spoken to others this is the promise what god has given to david now that he is stunned by things what's happening but he is not immersed in that perplexity he started meditating and speaking about the attributes of god so if you read from verse 5 to 14 a small note for the preachers you can make a sermon out of the attributes of god the attributes of god and number 3 verses 15 to 8 in the four verses he is confessing the sovereignty of god so this god is an almighty god let come what may whatever things could happen contrary apparently contrary to what he has promised this god is a sovereign god verse 15 down Blessed is the people that know thy joyful song they shall walk O Lord in the light of the countenance if i know who this god is even there is darkness around me things are happening exactly opposite to contrary to what i believed i will not walk in darkness i will walk in the light those who believe it lift up your hands and praise god lift up your hands and praise god hallelujah hallelujah it's a very powerful the lord called you the lord gave a promise i will do this for you i will use in this ministry or i will do this for your business i will do for your health so many promises now things are exactly contrary to what you receive but those who hear the joyful song they shall walk o lord in the light of thy countenance they will not walk in darkness they will not walk in darkness in thy name shall they rejoice all the day though everything is contrary they walk in darkness i'm sorry they walk in light and they rejoice all the day and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted in thy righteousness not in their own righteousness not in the things which are happening around them in their righteous in your righteousness they shall be exalted for the word the glory of their strength my strength the glory of my strength is god is knowing god is loving god is serving god the glory of my strength is not this my strength is knowing god there is a glory for the strength there's the beauty for that strength the beauty of my strength the glory of their strength is god and in your favor in thy favor our horn shall be exalted our horn our strength verse 18 for the lord is our defense and the holy one of israel he is our king the god is our defense and the holy one of israel is our king he is sovereign things are contrary the prophet is perplexed against the promise god gave to david he considers what was the promise what was the promise god gave to david from verse 19 to 37 
we see that exactly almost the same thing in 2 samuel chapter 1 uh, 2 samuel chapter 7 from verse 1 so then thou speakest in vision to thy holy one probably that was the nathan the prophet thou speakest in vision to nathan and said i have laid help upon one that is mighty i have exalted one chosen out of the people about david he say i have found david my servant when my holy oil have i anointed him i have anointed david to be the king uh, with whom my hand shall be established my arm also shall strengthen him the enemy shall not exact upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him he was uh, in the wilderness the enemy was against him enemy afflicted him now he has become the king he is in the palace so the prophecy comes the enemy shall not exact upon him nor the son of the wickedness afflict him and i will i will beat down his beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him god will bless them those who blesses god will curse them who curses us it's a god's promise but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be uh, exalted i will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the rivers he shall cry unto me thou art my father my god and the rock of my salvation david will say god you are my father you are my god and the rock of my salvation and i will make him my firstborn higher than the kings of the earth my mercy will i keep for him for evermore and my covenant shall stand fast with him listen my covenant shall stand fast with him his seed also will i make to endure for ever his seed will also uh, make to endure for ever and his throne as the days of heaven his throne as the days of heaven verse 30 if his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments then will i visit their transgression with a rod and their iniquity with stripes nevertheless nevertheless my loving kindness will i not utterly take from him now suffer my faithfulness to fall my covenant will i not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips god has said ethan has told others about this prophecy probably aman has told others about this prophecy asaph has told others about this prophecy you know they all are perplexed now you see psalm 77 there we read about the perplexity of asaph <coughs> lord what's happening he has spoken all these things my covenant i will not break nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips once i have sworn by my holiness that i will not lie unto david his seed shall endure forever and his throne as the sun before me it shall be established forever as the moon and as faithful witness in heaven selah i told you now i love that word selah in this song in every song in this song the mood change is it all these things lord but what's happening what's happening even his wise son solomon he was wiser than i am i was he uh, he backslider he built a temple for a pagan god his heart went toward them even your own son david first son uh, david successor now rehobiah he is not listening to the wise men of his grandfather what is happening he said all those things i believed again he passed now what is next verses 38 to 45 things have become contrary to what god has promised the lord's message to you you are perplexed you are perturbed to bring this message to you 
the god was taking me to a very difficult path i was reading this 52 verses again and again again and again again and again what the lord wants to tell the church i said lord how can i explain this the people are with the same question it seems to be the question of an infidel god said i swear unto david what's happening the kingdom is divided it's not established i thought that he would punish the king with a rod or with the stripes but the kingdom is established and the whole kingdom is divided there is war perpetual war between the brothers mother you are very much worried sister you are very much worried what happened to all the promises what happened to all the prophecies god said now there is a perpetual problem i still believe in god i believe in the attributes of god i believe what god can do how things are going contrary the so number 5 contrary to god's covenant contrary to what god promised the prophets complained and lamentation verse 38 but thou hast cast off but you said all these things but napoleon bonaparte said the word but must be removed away from the dictionary but you said all these things but that but causes the doubt that but causes the unbelief that but causes the question but thou hast cast off and abhorred thou hast been wrought with thine anointed verse 39 thou hast made void oh gosh you have made void the covenant of the set You know how do they make void a covenant? I given a promissory note. I'll do this. I'll do this. I'll do this. I'll do this. To make that covenant void, I must take the promissory note. Either I should drive a nail to nail through that promissory note, or I should just tear it. No more. That promise is. valuable those who are dealing with these type of promissory notes they know very well that's all a covenant was made in the marriage how do you make the covenant null and void divorce the marriage certificate should be torn and thrown no use of that anymore the covenant is made null and void Lord, you have said all these things. Now, the very powerful thing, you have made void the covenant. You have made the covenant void, void the covenant of thy servant. Thou hast profaned the his crown by casting it to the ground. Every what happened is kingdom it's divided, and ten kingdoms are gone out. Only two small kingdoms, Judah and Benjamin. You have thrown the crown <laughs> into the ground. I I honestly tell you, many of you may think that you have never read Psalm eighty nine before. You might have read it, and you, I don't know how many of you have understood it. I never understood this yet. You have broken down all his hedges. Thou hast brought his strong holds to ruin. All that pass by, pass by the way, spoil him. He is a reproach to his neighbors. Everybody is mocking. Aha! You said God will do this. God will do that. He has become a reproach. the hedges are removed the protection is removed in some families 
in the life of some minister servants of god those who dedicated their lives for the ministry the hedges are removed they lie they give room for lust they go behind the evil things they see movies they are very proud they go after money all their dedication all their holiness all the hedges around them the strong points in their life he will not speak a lie he will not have a loose talk with a girl he will not give room to lust a man of honesty a man of integrity in the name of jesus i tell you the hedges are broken no more there is a wall around them every wild boar every pig every wolf can come and destroy that garden there is no strong wall there is no protection lord you have removed the hedges the dot is going after what them no obedience in the family there's no love between husband and wife all strong holes are broken living together no real love no obedience no prayer no praising everything is removed the psalm is crying thou hast broken down all his hedges thou hast brought his strong holes to ruin all that pass by the way spoil him he is a reproach to the neighbors even yesterday somebody phoned us and said there is always quarrel in the house the house owner is telling us to vacate no more songs of singing is heard quarrel is heard outside a pastor a servant of god is white they are sitting and singing and praising god a servant of the neighbor heard they are singing stood still peeped in what are they doing what are they doing oh they are worshiping god what is heard outside quarrel fight we have become reproach to the neighbors 42 thou hast set up the right hand of his adversaries thou hast made all his enemies to rejoice what happened to david's enemies they all were scared of david they all were scared of solomon now they are started rejoicing over the fall of the kingdom thou hast also turned the edge of his soul now his sword is not fighting that edge has become blunt you turned it no more his edge is sharp that was also turned the edge of the sword and has not made him to stand in the battle battle against evil spirits witchcraft battle against sin battle against lust battle against sex battle against anger battle against pride battle against covetousness the children of god is unable to stand they are unable to stand against lust they are unable to stand against evil talk they are unable to stand against filthy talk they are unable to stand against unprofitable conversation they are unable to stand against uh, uh revilings they are unable to stand against anger no more strength no more holiness no more righteousness they become weak their soul is turned and has not made him to stand in the battle thou hast made him the glory to thou hast made his glory to cease and cast his throne down to the ground his ministry his preaching his holiness his bible reading 
you have caused his glory to the ground to the earth you have caused his glory to the earth that's why i said earth he is just in the kingdom just in the church just be a christian just a sunday school teacher just in the worship just in the ministry the glory is gone that kingdom the throne is down to the ground that power that reign reign over sin reign over and uh, control the throne is gone the days of his youth has thou shorted and thou hast covered him with shame sell he stops he stops number 6 crying to crying to the lord verse 30 46 to 51 what else i can do? only one thing i can do pray to the lord pray to the in verse 46 after that pause how long there is a solution how long lord will thy hide thee so far ever shall thy wrath burn like fire remember how short my time is i am going to die how short my time is wherefore hast thou made all men in vain is everything in vain what man is he that liveth and shall not see death shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave selah his prayer also changes lord where are thy former loving kindness which thou swearest unto david in thy truth again he goes back to the covenant the promise he made unto david Remember Lord the reproach of thy servants the kingdom is divided everybody is reproaching now do bear in my bosom the reproach of all the mighty people Lord very big burden in my heart why we thy enemies have reproached our Lord why we they have reproached the footsteps of thy anointed my dear brother my dear sister when you think things are going contrary when your heart is pained with failures when you believe the hedge around this around you is removed when you feel your past glory is cast down i tell you in the name of jesus what he and the wise man did in his perplexed situation he cried and lord remember your promise lord have mercy on us oh lord remember you were promise lord finally verse 52 the seventh part concluding command of the wise man he was as i understand or as i see He was in the days of David. He has seen the days of Solomon. Probably he is seeing the days of Rehoboam. He knew what God promised to, eat, uh, promised to David through Nathan. They all believed. And Ethan has spoken to people about God's promise to David. But now things have become contrary. But he believes in the attributes of God. His faithfulness, his power, his might. his truth his justice his judgment his holiness etc the only one thing ethan was able to do was able to pray 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 ask god remember your promise o lord ask god have mercy upon your servant o lord lord establish my family 
establish my life establish my ministry cry unto the lord cry unto the lord what is the answer of that cry what is the conclusion of your prayer verse 52 is the most powerful of all the 52 verses the closing is very important he said blessed be the lord of the lord for ever more amen and all blessed be the lord there should be a praise in your lips whatever your situation may be don't fret what did we learn from psalm 84 things may seem to be contrary to what god has promised certain prophecies may not you may not see the literal fulfillment of certain prophecies i remember it just now and i thought that i should say this in the year 72 september i got saved october in a month's time the lord filled me with the holy spirit through a vision number 5 exactly on the eighth day i was to take baptism fourth morning seventh day after i received the holy spirit my 40th day of salvation god woke me up gave me a bible passage at that time i didn't know whether there was such a passage in the bible or not i still remember i want to read the passage i went i didn't want to switch on the light others are sleeping my mommy daddy they all are there i didn't want to switch on the light i still remember i took my bible went to the kitchen closed the door of the kitchen i opened up my bible i read a promise god has given me exactly 7 days before a uh, 7 days after my baptism the day, uh, seven days after my anointing and the day before my baptism i was moved to tears i didn't know what to do i totally committed my life into the hands of god in many different ways god has reminded me that promise but till this day i have never seen the literal fulfillment of that prophecy But every day I'm experiencing the spiritual fulfillment of that promise. Seventy-two uh, November four. Nearly forty-three years have passed. I have not seen a literal fulfillment of that promise. My dear brother, my dear sister. Now, what is the application we have got out of this song? verses 1 and 2 i will i'll go back to verses 1 and 2 i will sing of the mercies of the lord forever with my mouth will i make known the faithfulness to all generations for i have said mercy shall be built up forever thy faithfulness shall be established in the very uh, established in the very heavens praise god Trust in His attributes. Confess your confidence, my dear brother, my dear sister. If you can write this application, write down this application. A few points. Quickly go through. Though we may find find it hard to reconcile some dark providence with the goodness and truth of God, there are some dark areas. we are unable to understand can you just stand up feel the presence of close by your side maybe you can have your eyes closed keep god before you is there are areas in your life that you don't understand some dark spots Still, you don't understand why God has not answered your that prayer. You are praying for your son. You are praying for your daughter. 
for your son-in-law, for your daughter-in-law, for your husband, your wife. Still you don't understand God's ways. God wants me to tell you. God has made darkness his pavilions. Devan irulai, kaar irulai, nanakku marai vida maha vaitha. You cannot understand God. You should understand that you can't understand God. In the book of Proverbs we read, is the glory of the king to hide matters. Kari yengilai maraipadu raja avukku may. Even if you don't understand certain dark spots of God's dealing in your life, I tell you, number two, you should hold firmly to his promise. If you want, you can just lift up your hands and tell God, Lord, I don't understand. I don't understand this area, but I hold on to your promise. Just lift up your hands and tell God, Lord, I hold on to your promise. I don't understand why the answer is taken. I don't understand what's going to happen next. Lift up your hands and boldly praise God. Lord, help me. Help me. Hold on to your promise firmly. Number three. Take a decision. I will. Importunately. Without ceasing. I will be praying. Want to make a commitment? Though I don't understand. I hold on to your promise. I will importunate. Without giving up, I will be praying. I will be in prayer. No matter how serious the situation, no matter how serious the situation, there is ever matter and reason for praise and thanksgiving. Though apparently that is this there's no way that I can praise God. Still, you can praise God. Lift up your hands and praise God. Lift up your hands and praise God. Hallelujah. God is faithful. God is mighty. Just open your mouth and say, God is strong. God is holy. God is truth. God is the truth. Hallelujah. God is full of mercies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, what God promised to David in history, God has fulfilled it through Jesus to the church. And 1947, God has fulfilled it to Israel. He will not forsake you. Though we don't understand every content, He knows what to do, when to do, how to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah for the blessing of the church and the blessing of his family. I want, uh, the Holy Spirit wants me. Joe to lead us in prayer. Joe, come on. Hallelujah. This is a very powerful song. You are with the question, how long, Lord? You may not know the answer, but hold on to his promise. Commit your life to pray and praise God. Hold on to his promise. Commit your life to pray. And find a matter and reason to continue to praise him. Shall we pray? Jo. Gracious Heavenly Father, we praise you, we thank you, we glorify you. We thank you for this wonderful psalm of heart. We thank you that you have proven to us, O oh Father, you are in control in totality of every single situation of us. You are the God who reigns over everything of heart. Immaterial of our darkest situation of Father God, you are the light which could lighten every single situation in our life of Master. We praise you, we thank you, we glorify you. We thank you, O Father God, for the wonderful encouraging words you have spoken to us. You have enriched us, O Father God, Lord, with these words that we could depend totally on you, O Father. Lord, we praise you, we thank you, we glorify you. Continue to be with us, O Master God. Lord, in our hopeless situations, O oh, too, Father God, you are our eternal hope, O oh, Master. 
we praise you we thank you we glorify you thank you for the strength you've given us through these words of us certainly and surely o lord psalm 89 is a wonderful psalm of faith every single word of master god has built us of father god it has built our faith of father god in you we are dependent only on you o lord let our eyes look upon you o father in every single situation even though the situation may seem o father god nothing is possible but you are the god of the god of impossibilities o master we praise you we thank you we glorify you. continue to bless us o master in jesus precious name we pray